Welcome to Top 5 Final Fantasy. I'm Nokwe from Birds of Play, and in this video, we're going to be ranking the top 5 guest party members from the Final Fantasy series. When it comes to judging which guest party member will reign supreme, there are at least two criteria to keep in mind. The first being how useful or fun they are to have around in battle, and the second one, how big an impression their addition to the party adds to their character and the story. If you end up liking the video, you might want to consider becoming a regular guest of the channel yourself. So don't forget to subscribe and join the birdhouse. Even if it's only for a little while, you might leave a big impression. And speaking of leaving an impression, don't forget to tell us down in the comments below if you have any wishes for future top 5 Final Fantasy lists, and who knows, we might even make your wish a reality. But without further ado, be our guest as we check out all the rest. Number 5. Core Leonis from Final Fantasy XV. In a game about taking a road trip with the guys, while listening to some classic Final Fantasy tunes and looking for a good place to fish, Kor represents a much appreciated call back to reality. When Kor joins the party, we are reminded of our responsibilities as royalty, for even though Kor's vocation is to serve the crown of Lucis, he seems to have little qualms about speaking truth to power and putting this in a place when needed. Aside from being a general badass wielding a big ass katana that any king in waiting would be lucky to have around, Kor is a lifeline to the central story of Final Fantasy XV that otherwise often seems to be just out of reach. Therefore, with Kor around, we can take joy in having a man with his abilities on our side, at the same time we take solace in the fact that our naive prince has been set on the path of becoming the king his people need him to be. Number 4. Seymour Guado from Final Fantasy X Seymour only joins the party for a single fight, but he's a very welcome addition to the team, especially since the battle is almost tailor-made for him to show off his abilities. Seymour's powerful spells bypassing the Sinspawn's defenses. In addition to this, Seymour is notable for having access to both black and white magic, something other characters will have a hard time emulating until later in the game, especially if you're playing on the standard sphere grid. Just like Sephiroth's guest appearance in Final Fantasy VII, Seymour shows us in action what we ourselves can aspire to one day become. The difference in skill might not be as pronounced as the disparity in skill between the Fletchling Cloud and the veteran Sephiroth, but actually having manual control over Seymour lets us experience firsthand what wielding this power actually feels like, as well as teases Seymour as a possible future party member. Even though our paths ultimately diverge due to Seymour having a, let's say, very unique solution to Spiro's problems, our short time together nevertheless underscores a common humanity, even if just for a brief moment and even if Seymour joining the fight was incentivized by ulterior motives. Number 3. Marcus from Final Fantasy IX Number 3 was a toss-up between Beatrix and Marcus from Final Fantasy IX. On the one hand, Beatrix is a fan favorite that a lot of players wanted to see included in the main party. After experiencing firsthand how strong she is by finding ourselves at the wrong end of her blade on more than one occasion, it is also a great change of pace to get a controller in battle. Even though she could be said to suffer from a little bit of villain turd ally syndrome, Marcus, on the other hand, has been by our side from the very beginning, and stepped in as the resident thief character in the absence of Sedan. Showing Marcus some love can also benefit the party in the long run, since his stats transfer over to Aiko without affecting her level, making it possible to really beef her up. This coupled with the fact that Marcus is present during the only point in the game that features an endless stream of enemies and can be equipped with a blood sword so that he can heal himself by fighting, makes for a very interesting combination of exploitable elements in the game. Regardless of these more practical concerns, however, Marcus gets a spot on this list for being a real bro. Like some lovesick puppy that is finally getting attention, my heart is telling me Beatrix, but my brain is telling me Marcus. Number 2. Larsa Solidor from Final Fantasy XII When it comes to helpful guest characters in the Final Fantasy series, I imagine that a lot of players have fond memories of Larsa, as he joins the party for the first time as they venture into the Lushu Mines in Bujerba. The reason is that Larsa seems to be equipped with an infinite amount of potions to heal the party with, which is particularly important at such an early stage in the game, when the party hasn't yet become completely self-sufficient in regard to healing. Larsa's assistance is made even more important by the fact that the Lushu Mines include one of the best spots for early grinding in the game, in no small part thanks to having Larsa around. I could try to say something profound about how fighting alongside Larsa 
the younger brother of the game's main antagonist, humanizes the opposition, but when all is said and done, I'm just here for the potions. Honorable mention, Ghosts from Final Fantasy VI. Before we get to the top of the list, honorable mentions go to the Ghosts from Final Fantasy VI, for reminding us that sometimes a little can go a long way. The Ghosts can only be recruited while riding the Phantom Train, and have very limited combat capabilities, aside from diverting damage and sacrificing themselves by possessing monsters. But the sheer novelty of the experience encapsulates perhaps one of the most important aspects of being joined by guests, by giving us a chance to mix things up a little and make the most of every encounter, no matter how transient or fleeting it might be. Number 1. Cypher Almacy from Final Fantasy VIII Unlike some other characters on this list, Cypher doesn't bring any special powers to the table, aside from needing to sustain less damage than the others in order to trigger a potential limit break. Instead, Cypher is just one of the gang, the source of his powers ultimately coming from the same place since he, just like the others, must be equipped with a guardian force and have a magic junction in order to power up. Cypher joins the team very early in the game, at a time when the main party hasn't yet been fully formed, meaning that the player would be forgiven for mistaking him for a permanent party member. As fate would have it, however, Cypher seems destined for other things. No matter how much our paths might be set to diverge, we can nevertheless look back on our time with Cypher and reminisce about the good old times when we fought side by side, killing enemy soldiers in a foreign country for money in order to help our school stay funded and maybe finance some of our extracurricular activities, like riding trains and stuff. By betting on the wrong horse, Cypher represents the flip side of the adventure, as someone we might just as easily have become if only the tables had been turned, fighting alongside him driving the point home that at our core we aren't all that different. Hey everyone, it's me the other one. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe, click the bell, leave a comment, and you know, come now, make bird sounds with us. <laughs> <laughs>